Hi guys, Kat here again from HighLevelListening.com. I've got a great new set of phrasal verbs for you this week. Today I'll be talking about 20 phrasal verbs and expressions for clothing and going shopping. So let's get started. When you pick something out, whether it's at home, from your own closet, or when you're out shopping, you're choosing or you're selecting something. You might tell your child, okay, pick out your clothes for tomorrow, or someone might say, we need to pick out something for Lauren's birthday. If you're out shopping and you want your friend's advice, you could say something like, oh, here's some shirts I picked out. Which ones do you like? You might be waiting on a friend in the changing room and you ask them, have you picked something out yet? In English, we've also got some adjectives you can use for people who take a long time to choose or who are very particular about the things that they choose. We usually say that she's being picky or she's being choosy. I'm really picky when it comes to handbags and I want something of really high quality. That's why I'm choosy. If you pick something out and you end up not liking it, you'll probably put it back or you'll return the thing to its place. Okay, we don't need that. Put it back where you found it. These didn't fit, so I'll just put them back on the rack. The simplest difference between put it back and give it back is that you normally give something back to a person. Okay, give the pen back to the lady. Hey, give that back to me. Simply saying to give back usually means that you donate money or you do something good for your community or even a charity. So you could say something like donations are a good way to give back. When you try something on, you're checking the size to make sure that it fits. Usually before you buy it, but sometimes people want to try stuff at, on at home, kind of in the privacy of their own home. I would have tried it on at the store, but the lines were so long. Try it on and see if it fits. You can try it on in the fitting rooms. Have you tried it on yet? Go try this on. Let me know if you need a different size. Putting something on is the action of picking something up and placing it on your body. Once it's on, you're wearing it. Before you put it on, you're not wearing it. So I could say, hey, go put on something warm, it's cold outside. I'll just put a little perfume on, then we can go. And then the number one thing I hear parents tell their kids, put on your shoes, it's time to go. There's another similar definition, but it's about gaining weight on your body, not just putting on clothing. So you could say, I've put on a little weight since high school. In other words, I weigh more than I used to. The opposite of putting something on is taking something off. This doesn't fit me at all. I'm taking it off right now. Um, could you take off your shoes before you come in the house, please? Could I wear these shoes out of the store? Sure, just take one off and I'll ring up the price. Informally, if you hear someone say, hey, I'm taking off and there's no object, they're actually saying that they're leaving. So that's kind of an informal, casual phrase too. When you hang something up or hang something back up, you're placing something on a hanger. Hey, you need to hang up all of your clean clothes. All of your clothes should have been hung up by now. Hanging something back up means that you're putting it on the hanger again or placing it back where you found it on the hanger. Um, this didn't fit. Could you hang it back up for me? Oh, don't hang that back up. They'll just take the hanger off when I check out. Taking something back means bringing an item back to the store, ideally to return it and get your money back. Oh, I can't take it back. It's final sale, no returns. Final sale usually means that you can't bring the item back to the store to return it, even if you don't like it. Would you mind taking something back to the store for me? You can ask the sales associate, will I be able to take this back if it doesn't fit when I get home? If you keep your receipt, you could tell someone, don't worry, if you don't like it, I'll just take it back. If you're picking something up from the store, we're assuming that you're buying it. I need to pick up some groceries on my way home. Could you pick me up some batteries at the store? I really needed to pick up some new sneakers for the kids, but I just didn't have any time. Just come pick it up tomorrow. If a store is sold out of something, it means they've run out of everything and everything's gone. Uh, sold out acts more like an adjective than a verb, while run out is usually a phrasal verb. Wow, the sale was crazy. Almost everything was sold out. 
were completely sold out of everything. Run out or ran out of something acts more like a verb. They ran out of our usual brand, so I just got something similar. We've completely run out of everything. People usually shop around for big items or expensive items because it's worth going to multiple places just to try to save some money. Um, you can also shop around to find the best item if different stores carry different brands or have different sales going on. I shopped around a few places before I finally found it. I recommend shopping around before you decide. Uh, I wish I had shopped around a little more. This one is so much cheaper. I can shop around online, I guess. Looking around sort of implies that you're browsing or casually looking, and you might not actually be interested in buying anything. If a sales associate asks you, hi, what can I help you find today? You could simply say, oh, I'm just looking around, thanks, or just looking, thanks. And they'll probably respond with, okay, please let me know if you need any help. If a friend is buying something, you might say, I'll just look around over here while you're checking out. If a friend looks a little bored, you might say, well, at least just have a look around. You might find something that you like. Lining up is the action of making a line or someone putting things in a line. Everyone was lined up waiting for the doors to open. All the cars were lined up at the drive-thru. I need you to line up all these products. If you're just gonna wait in a short line and it seems to be moving at a normal pace, I would more naturally say just, I'm gonna go stand in line. Also, we've been waiting in line for almost an hour. Because if you say we've been lined up, it sort of sounds like someone forced you to be in that line. If someone asked, um, you know, how are you gonna pay for all this? It sounds like they think I'm crazy for buying so much stuff. However, how would you like to pay is something that a cashier or a sales associate would normally ask you and you could respond with, oh, I'd like to pay by card or I'd like to pay with cash. Uh, the for in pay for is important. It shows what items or what thing you're buying. So you could say, well, he paid for us to go on the trip. In other words, he put money towards the trip. But if you said he paid us to go on the trip, he gave the money to us personally. Another example would be she wanted to pay for dinner, but I told her it was my treat. Usually you can pay by a means of technology usually by card, by direct deposit, by bank transfer, but we often say pay with cash. So if you're expecting a paycheck, oh, I think she said we'll get paid by direct deposit. If you just throw something on, you're quickly putting something on and you don't make much of an effort. Oh, I just threw something on that was easy. Sometimes people look really nice, but then they act like it wasn't planned. Oh, this? I just threw it on. I barely even looked at it. If you want someone to hurry up, you could say, hey, come on, just throw on a jacket and let's go. Oh, um, well, I guess I just threw on a pair of jeans. Should I have worn something nicer? Some of these next phrases aren't technically phrasal verbs. Um, they could be adjectives or simply collocations that go naturally together. So we'll talk about those for the rest of the video. To pull something together is to look in your own closet for things to wear, as opposed to buying new clothes just for an outfit. Oh, it's just something I pulled together. Ideally, you don't make a lot of effort when you pull things together. Um, sometimes you just need one thing to make things look a little nicer. Yeah, these boots pull it all together. If you can pull something off, it means that, surprisingly, you can make something look good. It might be a dress that doesn't normally fit everyone, or it could be a color that isn't really popular. Uh, she's the only one here who can pull off that dress. I was a little surprised that I could pull it off. Yellow usually isn't my color. Someone who is put together means that they always looked well, looked well dressed, and they look like they put effort into how they dress and how they look. She always looks so put together, and I barely have time to get my kids dressed in the morning. Uh, you can also put things together to make an outfit, similar to pull it together. Oh, it's just something I put together from what I had in my closet. Retail therapy is a bit of a joke. Uh, it's kind of when you feel bad, you can go shopping and spend money to make you feel better. 
oh, a little retail therapy will make you feel better. A must-have is a thing, usually an accessory, a piece of clothing, or even technology that you should have or that companies tell you you should have. It's a must-have this season. This month's must-have section includes the newest collections from top designers. Another way of saying <clears throat> you really want something is that you've got to have it. I've got to have it for my outfit. In other words, I really want it for my outfit. If you blow your budget, it means that you've spent way more money than you planned on. I can't believe I blew my budget on this trip. Oh well, at least I had fun. Um, fork out is, is pretty informal and it's kind of a negative way of saying that you spent a lot of money on something. I don't want to fork out 50 bucks for that. Or I can't believe she forked out hundreds of dollars for that. It's pretty informal and negative, uh, but it has a time and a place for sure. We usually max out credit cards because they usually have a spending limit. So if you say, I maxed out my credit card on these new shoes, I would assume that you spent a ton of money on them. All right, guys, that's all I have for you today. Make sure you visit highlevellistening.com for more advanced English. We've got tons of listening clips to listen, and listen to and improve your naturally spoken English with vocabulary, expressions, IELTS practice, and more to help you learn better English for the real world. Any questions, please visit the comments section below and say hi. I'll see you next time.